Welcome back to Surviving and Thriving, where we share with you the things that we have learned as we have transitioned our family from struggling to survive disease to thriving, right smack dab in the midst of it, in the hopes that something that we share with you will help you, enlighten you, and encourage you as you transition your family from struggling to survive disease to thriving, right smack dab in the midst of it. Everybody's talking about the coronavirus, right? The hottest topic all around the world right now. First and foremost, I want to let those that um, are dealing with the coronavirus and that are affected by it directly or indirectly know that um, we are praying for you. Um, I have been praying for you and I will continue to pray for those that are affected by it, as well as those that are not affected by it, because we're praying that this thing stops and get nipped in the bud as soon as possible. Now, there's a lot of opinions out there right now about how people should be responding, how people should react. Is it a hoax? Is it something, you know, is it, you know, panic time? There's a lot of things that are being said. A lot of people are speaking quickly. Um, I'm always against speaking quickly. Because things happen, things change. Sometimes you got to let some stuff play out a little bit. But everybody's talking about the coronavirus, and I guess rightfully so. I am not here to tell you how to think about it, how to respond, or how to react. But I am going to tell you what my household is doing. And maybe that can give you a little bit of insight um, and help you to figure out what you need to do. But I'm just going to share with you what my house is doing, okay? And our stance on the whole thing. I do believe that this is a time for everyone to use some logic and some wisdom. And I'm going to leave that right there for whatever you feel logic and wisdom is. So with the coronavirus, my family looks at the numbers. We look at the flu numbers and how the flu works because they're saying this thing is like a flu. The flu is dangerous for the elderly. It's dangerous for those that have compromised immune systems and it's dangerous for babies, right? So with the coronavirus, we know that most of the people who are um, dying because of the coronavirus are considered elderly or have um, compromised immune systems. And we have heard that more people have died from the flu just this year alone from those that have died from the coronavirus. Now let's get some things kind of out here. The flu is not an American thing. Did you know that? The flu is not an American thing. People all around the world deal with the flu. So when I'm in my household, when we're looking at the coronavirus, we have not changed our game plan. I did a video a couple, couple months back. You can go back and look at it, talking about how to deal with colds um, and flus, right? When, you, when, you're, when you're dealing and overcoming with health issues, we are doing the same thing that we've always done. Right now, um, we, are, we had taken a little break because I told you with oregano, it's, it's, it's pretty strong, but you don't want to take it every day for your whole life. You need to take a break for it. We had took a few weeks break and now we're back on our oregano, but we take oregano, we take echinacea. We do the things for life that we need to do. We, we drink aloe vera juice. We, we do the things for life that we need to do. We take a lot of things. We drink a lot of herbs. We use a lot of supplementation. We use a lot of um, essential oils to build up and to maintain the strength and the health of our bodies and our immune system. So that's not going to change, right? Um, we're still doing all the things that we, we normally do. We, When I wash dishes, you guys, I put a little bleach in the water. I put a little vinegar, one of the two in there. We keep things clean in our home um, and we keep things sanitized and we do deep clean. Those are things we're going to continue to do, the things that we do for life. You know, if some of the kids outside, because, you know, the neighborhood kids play at our house all the time, they're out there with runny noses and hacking and stuff, it's time for y'all to come in. I can't control somebody else's kid if they can't come in the house because the kids come in our house a lot, not right now. So we do a lot of things for life and not just for the flu season. 
but because I've got to keep myself strong as much as possible. And I need to keep my family strong as much as possible. Because if my family gets sick and I got to take care of them, that's a lot, right? And I usually end up wearing myself out. So I try to make sure that my family stay healthy as much as possible. Do everything that we normally do to keep our our immune system strong and healthy as possible. Now, when we go out and about, right? We're going out and about into the world in faith and faith in Christ Jesus, and faith in the blood of Jesus, and faith in the word of God. Now, if you don't believe in all of that, I don't know what to tell you what to do, but I'm telling you for me and my house, this is how we are and how we operate and what has worked for us and will continue to work for us. So we go out in faith. We're not going out in fear, okay? Now, the coronavirus is a serious thing. You should you should take it serious, just like you take the flu serious, right? Um, but we're not gonna go out being panicked and fearful. We're not stocking our house up. I usually keep my house stocked up anyway, right? We try to keep some things stocked up with staples that we need. But we're not going to go out and be in a panic in anything that we're doing. We're going to continue to wash our hands. We're going to continue to keep up good hygiene. If we see that other people are coughing or whatever, we're going to probably step back a little bit like we always do. Nothing new is going to happen on that end. But we have talked as a family and my husband and I have talked and we've talked with our kids and we've come out to say that we're not going to panic and we're going to walk in faith, but do our due diligence as far as being safe and being healthy. Now, how you translate that to your family, I have no problem with it. However you translate it, that's how you translate it. Here's my part on this. My husband goes out of the house. He takes care of the family. And he provides for the family, right? I deal with all the health things that I got to deal with on a daily basis. And it's a lot. And all the point is just, it's a lot. And I maintain the entire inside of the home. Now, his viewpoint on where he needs to be right now is different than my viewpoint on where I need to be right now. Because we have different roles that we play in this family. So as the mother and the wife of this home, the woman of this home that's handling this home, my husband's calling me. I'll be back in just a minute. Alrighty. My husband's at the health food store right now buying us some more health food stuff, right? <laughs> health stuff. Um, so my, my outlook on it as the wife and the mother and the woman of this home is this. I'm going to do my due diligence to make sure that the house is is clean, right? Disinfected, do all the things that I normally do. It's 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 what I normally do. But on top of that, I feel like as a woman, it's my job to make sure that I'm covering my family in prayer, and my extended family, and the nation and the world, right? Um, but covering my family in prayer, making sure that um, they're getting the good, healthy nutrition and the things that they need on the inside to keep them strong and um, making sure my house is a safe haven, right? Um, Doing the things that I need to do to be diligent, watching my family, just diligent. But to also, um, I'm keeping them in prayer. I'm praying the scriptures. I'm praying the word, right? This thing is not coming to my house in Jesus' name. And I am sitting still and sitting quiet before the Lord to hear what he might say. Because I understand that at this time, it's a time that we need to operate in wisdom. We can all predict what we think is going to happen. Oh, it's going to go away. Oh, no, it's going to triple. They're saying one third of the nation is going to be affected by this thing. But I can declare and decree that my family is not in that one third, right? We are not going to be negatively affected by that, as well as do my due diligence. But I can't. Mm-hmm. try to think ahead and say, oh, it's going to go this way. So let me jump ahead of that and get ahead of it in this way. I don't know how this is going to unfold itself or where it's going to go. So at this time, I'm sitting quietly before the Lord. I'm seeking his face. I got my face turned like Flint, right? And I am quiet and I'm hearing God and I'm seeking him as I'm praying, right? And I'm declaring and decreeing. Because it's a time of wisdom. And I feel like at this time, every little thing we need to do, I need to do. I need to listen to God. 
because it may be in the small things, right? To to buy that extra water now. No, no, don't buy the water now. I need you to do this now. And so when you're navigating yourself through crises, right? Through a pandemic, it's really important to sit still and to listen to God. And that's what I feel like my job and my role is as a wife, the woman, the mother of this home. Now you do what's best for you. Okay. If you feel you're prompted that you need to go in a different direction and do something else, you do what you feel is best for you. But what I would encourage everyone to do is to be calm. Even when, you know, like when you're having a health crisis, when it's a health crisis mode, it's not time to panic, right? You may feel panicky on the inside, but you got to keep yourself calm so you can make clear, concise decisions. So that is where I'm at, okay? Now, here's what I want to say to all of you. Take care of yourself, okay? And do whatever your due diligence is for you for life and for health. Because when all of this is over, right, there's going to be what's called an aftermath, okay? It's when you have like a tornado come through and then the aftermath of the tornado, you got people who are in shock, buildings are torn down, there's a time of recovery, right? We're going to have to experience that because you see that airlines are being affected, people are losing jobs already because of things that are going on. This is going to affect people in our nation in many ways. And so there is an aftermath. So right now, make financially wise decisions, okay? I'm not saying quarantine yourself and lock down on your money. I'm saying live in the process of it, but be wise. Don't overextend yourself right now because you don't know what tomorrow holds. Now, with that, right, stay in faith. Don't panic. Whatever you do, operate out of a place of calmness, stability, peace, and soundness, okay? Hope something in there was helpful for you. Until next time, remember, in all things, at all times, even during the coronavirus, do you, be you. Until next time, bye.